Welcome back to Data Driven Recruiting. I'm Sophia Beck, and I'm joined by my co-host Tigran Sloyan. Awesome! Excited to be here, and today we're talking about setting the bar. Uh, when it comes to setting the bar, it's a very, very important topic because uh, we hear a lot that people have a very high bar and they have a very sort of proud perception of like we have a very high bar, uh, and it could be a tricky concept. So. Let's start from like why is you know setting the bar correctly is such an important topic. Sure, yeah. So there, so we're talking about setting the bar on like skill assessments, sure. right? And setting the right bar is important because if you are setting your bar too high, mm -hmm. you could potentially lose out on candidates that right. who could have performed, and you're limited with a very very small set of candidates. And there are more things that you will consider um, in addition to the technical skills, and you like just limit yourself with a very small pool of a candidate to start. Also, if you or your bar is too low, mm -hmm. what happens is that there are a lot of people who can pass and come into your interview process, and it becomes like a lot of a time sink for everyone who's being part of the interview process. So you want to be uh, having a standard and kind of a being selective, but you also don't want to be super selective where you are limiting yourself and shooting yourself in the foot. And yeah, there is this perception, as you mentioned, that a higher bar is a better bar. But I strongly disagree with that because you can limit yourself and your entire recruiting process to something that's not like practical absolutely and yeah i guess as you mentioned whichever way you swing you're gonna have problems if you're trying to set it too high you could be missing on candidates who could have performed really well mm -hmm. if you're putting it too low then you're bringing in a lot of people that are wasting everybody's time and are not actually getting it so like getting it right and or getting it in the right ballpark is is very important uh, what are some of the, I guess, attributes that sort of contribute to your decision on like, where do I set the bar? Yeah, there are uh, a few key factors that you should consider when you're setting a bar mm -hmm. for your organization and for a particular job you're recruiting for. Right. So for example, if you are looking to hire mm -hmm. uh, someone and train them to become a really good you know, team member and you have a training program and you have that capacity, um, I would say that the bar should be a little bit lower so that you capture people who have the skills right now, but also capture people who have potential to sure. grow versus if you are a very small organization or a startup, like every engineer or like team member counts like and you expect them to hit the ground running from the day one, then you want to make sure that your bias is you know, slightly higher than the average that you would go for. Right. Um, also same kind of a similar thing, if, you, if it's a very junior role, um, you want to, I mean, your assessment will be already around uh, measuring more fundamental skills, sure. but also you should think about differently, like for very new team member versus a very experienced team member. How about, you know, relative versus kind of uh, evaluations in a bubble, right? Because a lot of companies look at their bar in a vacuum where how do these people compare to each other, like the ones that we've evaluated? How about thinking about in a more holistic view of like how do they compare against the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, if you can gather the the person's performance against the population, entire population, and where that person stands, mm -hmm. that's like really rich information and if you can get it I think you should you know try hard to be able to see it from the context of how this candidate performs against the the peers mm -hmm. instead of just looking at like oh this per this candidate got you know 70 points out of 100 points mm -hmm. and ignore like what kind of a test it was how difficult the test was and right. like how others perform so right. if if possible you should try to get the rich context around the performance against the peers as the way of setting the bar on that particular data points instead of the absolute number of scores you get or points you get on a, a specific assessment because that's not comparable with other other roles that you are hiring so you cannot really have a unified 
understanding about where your bar is. Right. So like, let's say, you know, you had an assessment that had maximum 100 points and somebody got an 80. Like, how do you know if you had the rest of the world take that assessment? Would like only 0.1% get above 80 or would like 90% get above 80, right? Like, how do you even know what the bar is when you're Mm -hmm. looking at it in a vacuum? Yeah. Yeah, So like the top five percentile or 10 percentile like I think the like SAT does re- that really well like you get the score absolute number but you also get an understanding of where you stand against exactly. the entire population it's the power of standardization yeah uh, this is awesome so what's the bottom line here yeah the bottom line here is that when you are setting a bar for your assessments you need to keep in mind that first the assessment is a one dimension of uh, the whole multi-dimensional hiring decision process Do- so don't limit yourself to kind of a make hiring decision with only this part so don't don't fall into the trap of a thinking that a high bar is a good bar right yeah i like it a high bar is not not always a good bar right. let's live it at that Thank you for the interesting discussion today, Mm -hmm. and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.